Hello guys, it's me, your beta tester for Valve Wonder again. I hope you are doing well and you already started with the last part, printing the SDLs and fitted everything together, had no problems. And if you have problems, then write in the comments below and we try to help you. So for this video I have some surprises for you and I think you will be very happy about it. The first is that Webwuna made a tutorial extruder. It sounds very funny, but it is very useful, I think, when we have to explain later everything, where you have to bring it on, how to set it up, and so on. So I am very excited to show you some pictures of it later. And the next thing I want to show you for sure is the tutorial, how to bring the pull unit together. For this I made um, 3D renderings because WebWunder lost his video files, but that was a good opportunity to learn the things in 3D to make and to render and so on, and I think you will like it. I hope you will like it, but I think it's also easier to understand everything and it will prepare everything for the future when it becomes more difficult to see everything and to rebuild everything. So the next thing is I made a new design for myself, which I like very much and which will fit very well to my Creality CR10 which is orange. I will show you it later. It's a small movie. I animated and tried out a little bit with my Premiere Pro how it works and if it fits together. I made a little bit music together and I hope you like it. So and the last thing I think is in the video I discussed a lot with WebWunder how much it will cost and how is it able to reduce your cost and what you have to do for it. So I would say let's start with the most excited part that is the tutorial extruder which is really really awesome in my opinion. I like to very much discuss with WebWunder about it because our goal is how we can make it easy for you to understand how you have to set up everything that it works perfectly in the end and where the complicated parts and how it fits together and so on. So please do me a favor, press pause on the video and write in the comment below what do you think about the transparent case? Is it enough to explain later everything you need to know about the details, how to set it up and so on? or what you would improve and then press play please thanks so thank you for the comment it's very important for us to see what your thoughts are or where you see the problems in future and what we can improve so thanks again and by the way you see already pictures where you can see that the progress of the desktop filament extruder is going on and that we don't stop in the mid of the series so you can start with a slider of the last video and go on so by the way, I want to tell you that I would plan to make every two weeks a video for this series because it's extremely time consuming to prepare everything and to discuss before I can make such a video all my questions with Werbewunder. And there are a lot of questions I can tell you because otherwise it's not possible for me to make you a good video and to go into the details which are important for you because I had the problems before. And after that is clear and we go to the next step which is to build everything together for the pull unit I want to show you a little clip of my design which you can rebuild by yourself if you want and I can share with you my files. But that is only an idea I had and if I change it or not in the future I don't know. But it's possible to do, I discussed with WebWunder, and I would say, let's get started. Welcome back. I hope you liked the design and the small movie and that you saw everything together, the slider, the winder, the filament extruder. What we else need is a cooling unit that we will bring in the over next video. And what you see now is the CR10 on the left, which has a print bed of 30 by 30 centimeters. And the right is the desktop filament extruder. 
and that is really the real size compared to the CR10. Means it's a really, really tiny machine, and that I hope will many people make very happy. So, and now let's come to a question how much filament I can produce per hour? So, the point is. As hard as the filament is, as low as the machine can produce it per hour. Means PLA is a minimum what Werbewunder told me should be able to print as one kilogram. That is a lot. And now we come to another question, is which depends on the parts you use. So if you rebuild this little tiny machine we built, the amount of money is $400 around. Depends on where you buy it and which parts you use. But if you rebuy all the things from the shop, we uh, calculated 400 euros. So that is the minimum you have to spend. You can spend more. And the good thing is, if you spend a little bit more, you get also better results for the filament. But for this 400 or 450 dollar, how you want it, is that you get the same quality that you get out of the filament extruders from commercial products, which cost you several thousand dollars. We really compared it and we, we checked it and we saw it. That means you save a lot of money in comparison to commercial products, which gives you the same quality of filament. But Werbewunder would not be Werbewunder if he hadn't found a quality increasing way. And that means he developed an own screw which brings a granulate to the heaters. And that is so optimized that you get a much, much better result out of it. But you can also go with a 450 buck version because that is really what you get from commercial products, which cost several thousand euro. But that is only needed if you really want to improve your filament, which means it's more exact than the versions which you can buy normally. So I asked him as beta tester how much the improved screw costs because I want to inform you before you make it. And he told me the screw costs him from the manufacturer directly 700 bucks. But there is a way to decrease the price and that is a lot by pre-orders. Means as more people want this improved screw, and I will show you after some videos if the improvement is so necessary or not, that if more people pre-order this screw from the manufacturer, then we get a price of around 300, 350 bucks. So in short, it means we talk about a price of 400, 450 till 700, 750 dollar. So I will test it before in the cheap way, means 450 and in the little bit more expensive, I will buy it definitely, I know it now, because I got some filaments from him to test it and I have to say it's a quality is extremely well and in my opinion it's absolutely worse because then I know better isn't possible. And I would compare it definitely with a famous manufacturer of filament. I mean I have absolutely no problems to print with his filament, but I had also no problems to print with a cheaper version. He gave me two that I can compare it. I will compare it by myself in my extruder when I build it together, and I will tell you and show you how big the difference is. But I am sure he tell me the truth because otherwise, what would be the sense? He has his screw. He don't need a, a mini extruder, so there is no reason to to lie to me. Now we come to the final part in this video, and that is that we build together this pull unit. Let me tell you a little bit about the pull unit. The pull unit has the task to bring the filament, which comes from the cooling unit, and before it comes out of the extruder, to the right thickness. Means as more it pulls, as thinner it becomes, and as less it pulls, as thicker it becomes. So what do you see here are the print parts means the STLs that you have to download and to print by yourself. The colors have no reason, it's only to see it better. What I have to say is the top part isn't in the STL files. It means it's only necessary if you have only weak filament to print. So let's say it's PLA and after you have rebuilt everything together and you think, oh, that's not stable enough, then you should print by yourself the top. And that you can also do with wood or something. You don't have to print it, but it gives a, a little bit more stability. Now we come to the first part. That is the mainframe. There you see two holes inside. Use it to mark it on the base plate. Then make holes inside and make a thread inside. 
and try it out if the screws will fit and then take it out again. So for this part I can absolutely recommend the German video. It isn't important that you hear everything but do you see what I mean and how he is doing it in a professional way. And now we come to the part where you have to bring the bearings inside the mainframe by heating up it before like in the slider version which is the last part. Then you have to do it on the other side as well. Now we come to the rolls. You need two of them. One of them has a little bit longer linear rail than the other. Now you have to put the printed part, which is the orange part, over the linear rail. For that you have to heat up the linear rail before, like in the slider video, so that it can stick without glue. After it you bring the tube over the printed part. All parts you need you find in the description by the way. And as I said you need two rolls. So let's build the second roll also. Means heat up the linear rail, bring the printed part over it and press the tube on it. So as you can see here now the linear rail on the bottom is longer and that is for a reason that later there comes a pulley on it. Now we bring on the upper linear rail two printed parts where we will bring on later the springs but for now we bring that part as you see it now into the mainframe and then we bring also the other side on it. In 3D I made an explosion graphic with what you can see now and that shows you how it looks without the frame and how you have to bring it together and you see also the springs which we bring on later. So by the way I hope it helps you that I made it in 3D and you can see everything better. Now to give it a little bit more stability we have to connect the second frame part to the first frame part and that we are doing with screws. They are coming from the bottom and going inside the second frame through the first frame. By the way you see here all the threads are already inside the STLs but you have to rebuild it again with your inner thread tool so that it's sharp enough and that the screws will fit. Now we bring on the outsides that we connect by screws also. Later it helps the filament to get better inside the rolls and get a good guide. Although I show you here the top plate which isn't, as I said before, inside the STL files, you have to make it by yourself, but it gives a little bit stability. But I want to show it in your 3D how it should look or how it can look. And if you have to do it, then it should be very easy for you to make. Now we bring on the base plate. For that we had tried out the screws before, otherwise it would be very hard now to find the hoods so that it fits exactly, that is important so that the motor later gets a good connection with the belt to the pulleys. But for now let me take off the top plate because that's important to show you the part when we bring on the springs inside. The springs by the way have the task that you can adjust slowly the pressure from the top roll to the bottom roll where normally the filament is between and that the filament gets the grip that it needs to get pulled by the motor. In that case from the roll. For that we have the silicon tubes. They give the whole roll grip which is also soft to the filament that it not deforms but gets in the same way the pressure that it needs to pull it. And to adjust it we use the screws that are M10. And now I show you how it looks without the side frame so that you can understand how it works. The spring is a little bit smaller than the M10 and the M10 has 10 mm diameter and the spring has only 7.5 mm so it can't go out and the inner thread holds it inside. After that we have to bring on the pulley on the outside on the bottom linear rail for that it is longer and we have to fix it with a little screw. So now we have to bring on the motor frame which you have as a SCL file. You bring it on. Try out how the motor fits and the pulley you bring on. The reason why you're doing it is that you find the right distance for the belt. That pulley to pulley distance is optimal, that the belt can't skip. And after it, you mark the 
frame from the motor on the base plate and then you can drill the holes into the base plate through the motor frame. But you will see in the SDL file there are a lot of holes inside the frame of the motor. Also there is an oval hole for the motor that you can adjust the motor distance later also. Please watch the video in German before. There he shows every single step how to do it and if you have it then you are ready with a pull unit. And the pull unit, as I said, is very important. It will control how thick your filament will become and you can adjust it by yourself and after a while you find out what is the right speed for it. But you can also automatic this part means by sensors which control the thickness of the filament and they adjust the speed of the pull unit to make it thinner or thicker. So and in my version I made a little fan which blows through the motor to cool it. Maybe if on hot days it becomes too hot for the motor but at the moment it isn't planned and we don't think we need it. So the video comes to the end as you see and we would love to see comments from you. Means what do you think about the project? Have you started already? What do you think about the design? Can we improve something to explain it better? So I hope I do my job as beta tester well enough that you get all the information you need and I could answer all the questions you have. By the way, there is an Instagram account from Werbewunder. He posts there pictures from the extruder or from designs and so. And there's a Facebook group special made for the extruder do-it-yourself project where you can join. And I can really recommend his Patreon channel. I don't have to say it, but I do it because I'm now since one year, I think, and I pay 30 euro per month. And I learned so much. I saved so much money in the meanwhile because I don't have to let it made by companies. I can make it by myself and can improve it and he has so much know-how which he shares with you that I really can recommend it. So now I wish you a nice week and I say goodbye till the next video. Bye bye.